What's up, everybody? This is Rotten Rye, uh, back again. Today, I'm uh, bringing you guys a little more DayZ. Playing on a new server. Took us a while to uh, get started. We're uh, starting. We're, we're had a had a pretty rocky start. The server's kind of getting the better of us, but we're trying. Were they? He was trying to. I don't know. If he hit anyone. <coughs> Damn, there's so many of them. Oh. Fucking mouse. Oh. No. No. Dead. Oh. Guess I should drive next. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so that just happened. Um. <laughs> All right, good news here. While we're waiting to die, um, we can start up these conversations now. Um, I don't know where the hell should we pick this up at. Like you're talking before about how, uh, you no, know, everyone gets fucking oppressed and shit, but they don't want to fucking see it like that, and they want to put themselves up on a pedestal and shit. And uh, there's a term going around right now that I, I fucking very much enjoy because it's kind of the truth. The oppression Olympics. Oh, yeah. They're all in a race to see definitely. who can be the most oppressed. Yeah, definitely. It's like a game. It's like, oh, I'm black and I'm a woman, so I have two oppression points. Exactly. And Big fucking you're guy. a white male, so you can't say anything. Yeah, I'm not oppressed at all. You know, fucking being a gamer in the '90s and fucking back when games weren't socially accepted, and anytime you said you're, you were you were uh, a gamer in school, you got fucking picked on, laughed at, and called names. Yeah, that's not oppression. That's no, that nah. Found at Underdoor. <laughs> I don't know where that's at. This is where I spawned at. I'm still waiting to die. <laughs> That's actually. I can't believe I fucking ran the damn car right into a pole. Fucking son of a bitch. <laughs> I can. Screw you, dude. I've done it, dude. <laughs> I fixed up a Hummer, dude. Pow, right into a freaking tree. But you have people who are like on Twitter, for instance, like Jade Fox, how, you know, she's out there doing her own little thing she's actually got a really good idea going on where uh you know she like every day that she sets up a uh a target essentially like a boycott goal like this is who we're gonna target today um you know email their advertisers um let them know the things have been said be personal in your requests don't uh you know just use the same things as everybody else and whatnot where did you spawn zach uh, under something or other. Underdoor? Oh, down to the, yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, like, be courteous, be personal, don't copy and paste, uh, thing. Like, it's always like, you know, be original with your, uh, request. You know, put some examples as to how this uh, website or company has wronged you or whatever. And, you know, it's a really good idea. But whenever because she's doing this and then tries to go and talk to some of these other females like Lay Alexander and uh, or Lee Alexander how the fuck you pronounce her name I really don't care um whenever she tries to talk to these people they instantly assume oh well you know that that's I like your cover account you're not you're not you can't be a real person so but I like your cover it's like so they instantly assume anytime somebody where'd I, you spawn Underdoor. Underdoor. Okay, sorry. But they instantly assume anytime somebody challenges, I hate to use this term, but the status quo, that they cannot possibly be a real person. And I think that is just childish. Like, you're not willing to have a discussion. You know? Like, you're just shutting down any chance at a conversation as soon as somebody challenges you. Zach, Untendorf has a castle. Yeah, I've seen it. I'm going to it. I got a tent. 
Where are we gonna meet up, guys? I don't know. I got two tents. I'm not even gonna pick up another tent. That just seems pointless. Yeah, I had a tent too. Until someone killed us. Hey, alright. It, it, <laughs> it was a telephone pole. It wasn't me. It's all good. Alright, so where are we meeting up at? We're all still kind of learning this map anyway. I'm gonna go to this castle to see what's in it. I'm assuming there's probably good stuff in it. But I may be wrong. I'm at a barn right now. I'm just checking random buildings. Found another jerry can. Grab it. I will in just a second. But, um. I don't know, do you, you, you get what I'm saying, though? Like that, you challenge them and they just refuse to acknowledge it. Oh, yeah, definitely, man. Uh, I was going to tell you something about it. Oh, yeah, one of, one of the last JWs was saying something like, you know, we don't say that just because you're a white male doesn't mean you can't have any kind of problems. But th that's not the problem. The problem is that they say being a white male trumps all other problems. Or... or or all their problems yeah. trumps that, you know, like, like no matter what you do, you're always wrong, basically. You know, no one's really saying that, that they're arguing that white males can't have any problems, but they act like that you should automatically Feel have a better situation. Else. Like, yeah, oh, I, I, you, uh, <coughs> uh, you shouldn't. Use it like uh, an old Mac Max Tempkin thing, right? When that all that shit went down, you shouldn't use this opportunity to uh, defend yourself. You should use this opportunity to talk about how rape is bad. Like really? Right. Everybody knows rape is bad. It, for crying out loud, it is like the worst fucking thing you can be labeled in today's society. Like it's, for, you could be labeled a murderer, and there's still going to be people that trust you. You get labeled a rapist, and that's it. The whole world hates you. Or how about how about this, man? Like. How they used Zoe Quinn, they plaster her face everywhere, she's like on Vice, on the Vice article, she's fucking pouting in the article. What, exactly. like they're You're using, crazy. they're using oh, yeah, gender yeah, stereotypes again. to bolster their own arguments. Like why don't they, why don't they talk about Phil Fish, who was driven off of Twitter and, and quit his job? Like, oh, but that's not, that's not harassment because he's a white male, right? It has to be a woman that's, it's all, we're all just targeting women. Like yeah. they just... It's like they use misogyny as a defense mechanism. Like no one's criticizing these people simply because they're women. We're criticizing them because they're corrupt and shitty people. Yeah. And, like and they the, only uh, focus the on the women to yeah to try to take. They only focus on the women to try to blunt that criticism and say that we're all oh, we're just misogynists and we hate women. And it's just not. It's absolutely not true. And it's a disgusting tactic. Oh, absolutely. And they, they try to take out or take away from the fact that this is about ethics. Like, right. Oh, well, you have no proof of this situation. Like, no, there's no proof of, uh, you know, of uh, corruption in games journalism. There's no proof of any of that. And, I, dude, I went on Facebook the other day. Because I've been on part of these Facebook groups for uh, quite a while. And, uh, you know, I, I, I got through, I got, you know, um, turned on to the group through uh, IGN's podcast. And, you know, like, already I'm going to say that <laughs> no one on the internet has love for IGN. Like, for crying out loud, they just steal anything that they write, for the most part, from other websites. Yeah. They're like, oh, well, you know, Kotaku published this, so we're going to say it to you. <laughs> but, uh, like, I found this website because of their, not their website, but these Facebook groups because of their podcast. And, uh. You know, somebody posted something about Game Brigade in one of their groups, and immediately that person was shot down. Like, you know, none of this holds any, uh, any fact, you know, like, that none of this is, uh, is proof. You're just showing substantial evidence. It's not, it, you know, it can't be taken seriously. Like, well, what the fuck? Well, what do you qualify as proof? Like, we're crying out right. loud. There's been countless things that people have shown that, to anybody, huh. they blatantly deny it. Yeah, but it, uh, like, like what it is is like, 
you've heard the term, you know, uh, super fan, right? How like some of these websites have their super fans, so they've been playing yeah. the websites for years on end. Or another term would be fanboy. Yeah, I was kind of trying to avoid that. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> where they will just, you know, latch on to anything that these people say and act like it's truth. And yeah. That's a problem. It's like, if you're not willing to develop your own opinion from somebody, then oh, that, there's an issue. Like, it's one of the things where I'm a huge fan of Total Biscuit, right? Like, but at the same time, I don't fanboy it at all. Like, I disagree with plenty of what he has to say. Like, for crying out loud, right now, people who are watching this video, you can see the counter up on the screen. It is not at a steady 60 frames. If Total Biscuit was playing this shit, he would ha be having a freaking fit. Because this game would be unplayable to him. And I, it's not something I agree with. Bro. Like, if it's not 60, it's not playable. Like, I'm sorry, dude, but no. I, yeah, that's just, I just silly. Yeah, I, just, I don't see that. 30 frames are fine. Especially it's coming from a console player. That's, that's fine. I don't care. <laughs> But like I'm will, I still am a fan of what he does. I'm still a fan of like his videos. I'm still a fan of the content he puts out and a lot of his opinions on them. But I don't agree, again. I don't agree with every single thing the guy says. Yeah, that, that's just like I listen to the Joe Rogan podcast, and my ex girlfriend would get upset. He would say like outlandish shit. He would insult vegans, and she was a vegan. She's like, oh, I just can't understand why you listen to this guy. And I'm like. You know, if I only listened to people who agreed with me 24-7, I would never listen to anyone. Yeah, because the world would be a very shitty place, and you wouldn't, like, there'd be no conversation type. <coughs> there'd be no, you know, how, how, how would you learn from the shit like that? You wouldn't. It would just... Yeah. Like, the term uh, echo chamber is one that's coming out a lot lately. You know, and that's exactly what it'd be. Everything would just be locked into an echo chamber. You would never hear another uh, or person's point of view. Everybody would agree with you. And you can't really say, well, go, the world would be a better place, because, no, it wouldn't. That's the exact situation going on in, like, atheist circles and radical politics, like radical leftism. They're literally talking about banning entire words and texts from college campuses, and anyone who disagrees is a misogynist or a racist. You can't criticize Islam or you're a racist, like... It's just, it's just getting to be out of control, man. Like, these things are completely against those ideals of free speech, freedom of association. You know, these are supposed to be people that are championing, championing critics, criticizing, like, religious institutions. But yet, they fall oh under my this... God, dude, don't try to break into the castle. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Like 50 zombies spawned and they are in run mode. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. That's you, dude. That just scared the fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I almost took a shot. I thought it was somebody. Did you go in this apartment? Yeah, there ain't shit in there. But yeah, it's like just the same thing with the same thing with Thunderfoot and the atheist community. Like they're doing the same thing that they are doing in Gamergate to the atheist community saying the atheist community is misogynistic and they're trying to drive women out and like it's just not the case man like like I said last time when we were playing it's kind of a fucking joke I've never been to like a game event or on a server with a bunch of guys who said you know damn there's way too many girls here like no one ever says that no if anything, it, like, it they say we opposite. want more girls, right? Like nobody's turning girls away from gaming except other girls. It's such a victim complex, man. Like, oh, I'm not being criticized because I'm a shitty person. I'm being criticized because all gamers hate women. Like, no, dude. It just doesn't it just doesn't stand up to reality. At the same time, I will uh, admit that you know not all um, gamers are. Uh, the greatest Friendly? people. Like, yeah, you will meet assholes. But again, you'll meet oh, assholes right. anywhere in the world. Of course. Like, that's just the sad fact of life. And if you can't handle that, I'm sorry. You're not ready for life. <laughs> well, that's another thing, too, with, like, the cherry-picking of troll comments. Yeah. Everyone on the internet gets trolled, whether they're male, female, gay, straight. It happens. Everyone knows it happens. 
to sit there and say, oh, I got trolled because I'm a woman, or I got trolled because of my identity. It's well, just not was, true. And that was something I told this get brought up, is the fact that he gets death threats all the time. And he Dude, me too. Them, and the people, like, for the most part, he just looks at it as stupid people on the internet. And the occasionally right. the ones that you have to take seriously, he actually does report them to the police. And the police tell you, do not share any of this information with the public. I'm a very opinionated person. I write a lot of different opinion pieces based on people's strong beliefs. I criticize religion. I criticize, you know, politics, certain political leanings. I've been getting death threats, death threats for as long as I can remember. People tell me that they want to put me in a fucking gulag, dude. Like, but I don't sit there and say, well, that's just because that it's just because I'm a man. Down. What? That you just ran out of the apartment building over here? Yeah. All right. But like, I don't sit there and say, oh, well, that's because I'm a man. It's because you're an opinionated person on the internet. There's a social disconnect. People don't see you as a as another human being. They just see you as an avatar or a, a profile picture. Like, there's, there's psychological studies about it, you know? There's been massive studies about the effects of the internet on people's psyche. And people treat people differently than they would in person on the internet. That has nothing to do with, like, an underlying hatred of all women or, you know... And I'm not saying... I'm not making a blanket statement. Of course there's homophobes and misogynists on the internet. But there's horrible people in every part of the walk of life, in every world. Like, there's, you're never going to escape that. It's sad right. it is to say, like... Another thing, like, I'm not, not going to sit here and say that, you know, every social justice warrior is a horrible person. Not. Yeah, I don't think that either. I, I, a lot of people use the, are using the term right now that, you know, uh, that people are co-opting movements and things like that. Definitely. And, you know, being as an atheist, you know exactly what that is. Atheism plus. You've, exactly. You've seen that whole co-opting, co-option of a movement happen. Exactly, dude. So, and the thing is. That's kind of what I feel like happened to social justice is it was a co-opted uh, movement. You know, like exactly, dude. People were like, "Yeah, you know, we're gonna stand up for minorities and stand up for you know people for just social rights of every person," which is right, a, and that's... a great noble thing. But then you got these people who are just, you know, they, they just want to feel important, and the only way of doing that is to not only just you know fit into a group and belong, but to make themselves special in that group. Right, and the way I put it is like. Anita Sarkeesian and these other people are like the televangelists of the social justice. Yeah, group. they have to be the special ones. Right. They can't just settle for, you know, helping along a movement. They have to get in there and actually full on push a narrative. And, you know, anytime anything bad happens to them, they have to shout it from the rooftops and, you know, make it seem like this ultra big deal. And I don't know. That's just, it's not, it's not the way you need to do things. Well, I personally don't even believe Anita was death threatened, honestly. I think she made it all up. No, I but, think she you is, know. but at the same time, I think it's just stupid people on the internet being stupid people on the internet. Just like, if you if you watch the Internet Aristocat video about it, like, he's talking about how... I know, I think it was actually Sargon of Akkad that made it. But he was talking about how Anita's like a fan of, like horror, romance, twilight type stuff. And then, you know, this guy's criticizing her and saying, I love your smile. And you're so beautiful, I want to drink in your smiles. And then he, the very next comment, he's like, and then I'm going to rape you. Like, it just seems so fucking set up, man. I don't know. And then the one comments that they had screens of was like, she took screenshots of them 40 seconds after they were sent to her. Like, she was just sitting on Twitter waiting for them to arrive. And see, I guess there's something out there about Zoe Quinn receiving a death threat call. And I guess uh, people will find that real suspicious, too, because I guess she had the camera ready, set up, and waiting. Now, I haven't seen this for myself, the judge. <laughs> but yeah, like, she was, like, from what it seems like, oh, guess, goodness. she was, like, ready, and set up, and waiting with this camera. Jesus Christ, man. Yeah. It's like, you can't be that coincidental. You're not expecting somebody to call bullshit. Well, it's the whole victim complex thing, man. It gives them a lot of leeway to do bullshit and then not get criticized for it. 
And I've seen a couple of these uh, journalists sit there and say things like, you know, why is this such a big deal that we're all friends and everything like that? Okay, look, it's not a big deal if you're friends. All we're asking for you to do is to disclose that you're friends. You know, because it, it's one of the things where it's like, hey, you know, I'm, you're supposed to look up to me and trust me as a, you know, the prime example of a game journalist or whatever. Uh, yeah, like, I'll, 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 a game, you know. And yeah, friends is not the problem. The problem is nepotism, where they give each other favors, write positive reviews, give them, you know, give their friends, make their friends winners of contests. That's the bullshit. Yeah. We don't care if they're friends. We just want people to be fair. I mean, and like, these I, companies don't the hold contests. How, um, you know, there's so many games coming out nowadays. There's no possible way that we can cover them all. I've heard that from multiple different websites, including <coughs> IGN. And IGN is a big website with a lot of people working there. And if they can't cover every game, then there's well, no dude. way. Like, it's one of the things where, like, alright, there's so many games that come out. Everybody freaking pick, or pick a game. And if you're attached to somebody who made said game, pick another game. Right. You don't need to review the same game everybody else did. It's that you just don't need to do it. Well, they have all the evidence now of that Google Hangout where they were talking about controlling the narrative and oh yeah, and, atta and, and attacking gamers. How, uh, you know, let's uh, send a support letter to Zoe Quinn, and it's like, no, you can't do that. That is nepotism. It, it, you can't do that. As much like, like, don't get me wrong, like Zoe Quinn isn't even part of this anymore. Like she was like, you know, yeah, who cares? I don't even want to call her the spark. She was kind of like the catalyst. Yeah, she was the catalyst to this whole unveiling event. And now every time anything happens, she has to try it. Like, somebody put up uh, a tweet the other day to me. They're like, oh, my God, I love it so much. It's the perfect fucking representation of her as a human being, essentially. And it kind of works for Phil Fish, too. She's like a fucking whack-a-mole. Every time she goes down, she's no longer fucking irrelevant anymore. She just fucking pops up again. Yeah. It's like, just stay away. It's, it's the and, same thing with Anita, man. And it's like same thing goes for Phil Fish. I was that like, whenever he disappeared last year after last year's rant and his whole little bitch about how he's not making Fez two and he's leaving the game and he's doing all this shit. Honestly, I was like, okay, cool. Well, we're not we're not gonna hear anything from him. He'll he's gone forever. He's gonna fade away in internet obscurity and just be gone. And then fucking he's back again doing all this bullshit. And it's like, dude, why? How? Just <laughs> go away. If you're done, be done. Don't sit there and keep fucking making yourself relevant again and then giving people more ammo. Yeah, like if you are if you are that pissed off about people bitching at you, then you wouldn't give them more ammo to bitch at you for. You would stay away. You would just be done. Right. It's like that Tom Cruise moment in, uh, what's that movie, Show Me the Money? Uh, or whatever. I don't have no idea. I think so, though. When he leaves the office and he makes a big scene, who's coming with me, you know? And he oh, makes this yeah. huge big scene about how he's quitting, and and then the next day you come in and he's sitting at his desk. That's basically what Phil Fish did. Exactly. And that's what he continues to do. He just continues trying to, you know, like, oh, I'm done with this. And uh, the gamers are all horrible people and all this shit. Well, if we're such horrible people and you hate us so much, why do you continue to make yourself relevant in our eyes? Yeah, it's like, go the fuck away. We don't need you, man. We're going to play games whether you're there or not. Exactly. Zach, where are you? Did he leave? What the fuck? Handle bag. What? Handle bag. I know that, but where... Oh. I got chased by zombies, dude. They chased me all the way to Handle Bank. You have no guns? I mean, I had a RTK with like 400 rounds, but I had to use it to kill like the 50 zombies that were chasing Jesus, me. dude, you are out there. Oh, yeah, he said he did that. Apparently it spawns a bunch of zombies on you if you fucking try to break in somewhere. Yeah, like 50 zombies, and they were all in run mode. Well, that sucks. Now I have like 3,000 blood. My screen's all blurry. I'm running over there. Are you running over there, Ryan? Yeah, I'm 2,000 meters away. I mean, I'm still alive. I don't see any zombies around here yet, but I also can't hardly see anything, period. I need to find someone with like, some medical supplies or something. Yeah, I've been saying that. But we need to get what, a car. What really disgusts me with this whole thing is you have these people who are like supposed to be our betters, you know? 
and uh, somebody last night, um, I, can't, I think his name is Ian something, he uh, was tweeting out uh, people using hashtag Gamergate talking about how, fuck, I, I, I'm going to look these up in a minute here, okay, I'm going to open the field, going to do it now. Yeah, well, you know, no offense, but from my perspective, I don't think there are betters. I think they're just fucking rich college kids who think that they're better, but they're actually not, and I they're know. proving it every step of the way. What I say by that is I mean that they're supposed to be, like, the role model. Held to a higher standard, exactly. yeah. Exactly. Well, you know, I'm not going to preach about my political beliefs, but that's why I'm opposed to hierarchy because all human beings are fallible and all human beings desire or w can be corrupted so once they're in positions of power they have the ability to be corrupt Here it the is. only way this to remove that situation is to remove hierarchy but anyway go ahead I love how these worthless gamergate pricks insert the hashtag in any conversation that they have with you in an attempt to rain harassment I fully expect to see my name on some screenshots about how rude and abrasive I am being for Rude and abusive. Wow, wow. Uh, abusive. I am saying. I am for saying that. I am so tired of seeing people harassed over hashtag Gamergate. It's what you call a, tri or a chilling effect when people are afraid to even discuss GG. Anyone oh, who the chilling that, effect. A, anyone Sorry. who thinks I'm a nice guy and that I'm above telling stupid assholes to go fuck themselves are sorely mistaken. And it's like, really, dude, You are, this is coming from somebody who has set themselves up in a situation where you, you are supposed to be the moral better, and you are really leading by example. Dude. Yeah. Well, he wants to talk about a chilling effect and people not being able to talk about it. How about moot banning any, or IP banning anyone who speaks about it on 4chan? Oh, I know. How about, how about Reddit deleting comments yeah, and pruning threads banning? Right. It's just ridiculous. They don't then, see it on their got, side. You know, websites like Escapist Magazine coming forward and saying, oh, no, you guys can talk about it here, which, you know, kudos to them. Yeah, that was legit. You got, uh, you know, you know, it's crazy. You have these websites that are coming forward now that are you know, going to take the place of these other websites. Like, because their traffic is dying but day by day. You see their popularity yeah. taking the nose dying. Oh, dude. I unliked a lot of them on Facebook, and I refuse to even look at their articles anymore because of this bullshit. I'm yeah. tired of the, tired of the victimization, the victim the complex. I'm tired of seeing this whole gamers are sexist and they are horrible people bullshit. Yep. Uh, when we're not. Dude, if I even see Anita or Zoe Quinn on anything, I just fucking immediately stop reading it. I won't fucking participate in it, in it anymore. They've they've laid their bed. Now they got they made their bed. Now they gotta lay in it. That's the way I feel. Anyone who's going to support a company that's sitting there saying that we're pieces of shit and, you know, rape apologists and misogynists simply because we give a legitimate criticism of their nepotism, no, I'm not putting up with that. Oh, not at all. And, and that, that I feel like is some of the problem is that, you know, they act like they're so much better, but whenever all this shit broke, and we were trying to get answers from them. All they would do is throw around insults. Oh, I know. And Shit, it, Lord. Yeah. Kiss, baby. It wasn't even just Look. like a typical social justice fucking second grade, you know, schoolyard insult. It was like legitimate, <laughs> like, uh, you know, gamers are worse than ISIS. That was, that's the one oh, that yeah. brings back to me. Gamers are worse than ISIS, yeah. I mean, they're, they're just ridiculous, man. The whole situation is absurd. Basically, it's privileged, entitled people telling everyone else that they're privileged, entitled. That's what's the most disgusting about it. Yeah. And they, and they all act like, and it's a fucked up thing, right? They all talk about how, oh, we know, uh, as games journalists, we really don't have a lot of money, and we're all poor, and we're all broke, we have trouble making rent, and we hear all this bullshit, but yet they're in a Google group sharing stories and sharing information with each other. I'm like, I'm sorry, but maybe that's why you're all freaking broke, is because you share shit with each other. That's not how you make money in this industry. 
that's not how you get fucking cl or clicks and you, you you resorting to clickbait articles are just, like that's just pathetic like not granted oh, yeah, I understand definitely. that that's how you make most of your ad rev are your opinion pieces and getting people to click on those opinion pieces but th you, if that's what your ad rev is and that's how you make your money you really have to, are doing something wrong in your business right Oh, the whole thing with like, um, clickbaiting and making controversies just so people will click it. That's what I was getting at before is like, I won't even give them my click anymore. And I won't, you know, people say, oh, it's just as bad as piracy to run ad block on their websites. Uh, like, no, it's not. I didn't, I didn't agree to, to see those ads in the first place. Yeah. And it's not as bad as piracy to run ad lock on his website. I'm sorry, but that's your own right to do so. That's one of the things where people run out of ad block on my YouTube channel. You know, go for it. Like, is it gonna suck? Yeah, sure. But at the same time, it's your right. I'm not gonna sit here and ask. You know, like, I'm not gonna sit here. Uh, and I'll, I will ask you to turn them off. <laughs> but I'm not gonna sit here and tell you, oh, go turn off your ad block. It's hurting me. Like, no. If you feel like you know the ads are not, like are just pissing you off and they're in the way, go for it. I personally turn them all off everywhere, but... No, I have gotten to the point now to where the ad being, you know, trying to start my own YouTube channel and trying to do this, I do kind of feel for the situation. And I am actually watching a lot of more uh, YouTube ads now. If it I wasn't have, such a pain in the ass, I would actually turn them off to support, like, smaller people, you know... Well, you can, there's what? actually like a, uh, a whitelist thing. Like Jim Sterling, I guess, has a video floating around out there about he shows you how to add certain people or certain websites to a, uh, a whitelist. Yeah, well, I'm just saying I'm just not that conscious of it when I'm surfing around. Well, I could saying, technically like, just go if you do click the, the ad block. Thing, if you do the whitelist thing, it'll actually just allow those certain people to have ads view on their thing. Yeah. So there's that. Like you never got to worry about clicking it on or off. It'll just let certain ads run and the other ones won't. Zach, are you still in the same spot? No. Oh. Did you find any cars anywhere around that way? Nah, there's like nothing in Hindlebank. I'm heading uh, into... I'm trying to head down to the West Wholesaler, dude. Our only car destroyed. I'm sorry. <laughs> all got in the way. Just busting your balls. The hero camp down at the airbase. I just got the handle back too, dude. You're a dick. Yeah, why are you running? We were supposed to meet there. I thought he was he's bleeding out, so he, for him to move, that's fine. I have like no blood, dude. I gotta like, and I keep falling over, so I gotta find some stuff. <laughs> I don't know anything about this map, but me either. It's pretty awesome so far. Yeah, I like it. I don't know what this. What is this red dot on the map? I don't know what those red dots are for. Dude, Munchenstein? That's where you go after you smoke some. But there's a whole bunch of them all over there. <laughs> well, dude, I was running to Hindle Bank, but now it's kind of pointless. Where should I go? Oh, man, I should have went the other way, but that, I guess I couldn't really because I was stuck going the other way. I'm going to West Wholesaler, dude. I'm hoping there's, like, some medical tents there or something. There's got to be. I'll, I'll meet you there, too. That's fucking far, though. They said there's a hospital in Mutton, but I already had to run halfway here getting away from zombies, so it doesn't really make much sense to run 8,000 meters back the other direction. I just want a car, dude. So where are you going now? West Wholesaler. Alright. I'm I'm gonna go get a drink there's, like, fast. There's, like, cars there. What is this bus station thing? Is there supposed to be a bus there? I wonder if it's a fast travel. It might be. I doubt it. It'd be cool if it was. I think they do have those, actually. I can't see anything. I'm just, like, running on, like, a washed-out screen. I'll be right back once 